how many breeds are going to go in to the final project. You don't have to, you know, say specific breeds, but. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Well, at the moment, there's only two. Um, the, the plans are in there to throw a third one in there. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it is not what people think. I have never seen a post from anybody ever that had that right. Not one. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is funny to me. I never have. Uh, to put things into perspective, a lot of people mention uh, Pressas or Connie Corsos or things like that. Pressa Canary. Yeah, and, and I, I understand people get confused because, because of the name. name. But, uh, you know, Pressa is just a word. Mm -hmm. It's just it's a word that they use to name the Pressa Canario because of what it does. Pray. Dog a bite from the Canary Islands. Yeah. Press a canary. L loosely translated, yeah. So people get confused about that. But, you know, the images that I put out there are, are definitely, you know, they're, they're concepts. I think my favorite images are within the realms of reality. Like, we, I, I really believe that I can make a dog that's close to that. Um, but you have to put things into perspective, you know. We're talking about a terrier breed being bred to, to other breeds to size up the animal. And and in order to do that, you have to use a dog with a lot of size and a lot of bone in mm -hmm. order to make up for what the terriers are going to take away. Mm -hmm. And and Pressos and Connie Corsos don't have that. You know, they don't they don't have enough of that to to uh, to make up for what because <laughs> the terrier genes are strong, man. Mm -hmm. I figured that out real quick. And so they you know you, you need to go bigger you need to go more mass more bone more more size all that because it's very difficult to to get the size and bone and mass that you want and then somehow pull the the terrier traits that you want from that head type it isn't easy you know and so some of those breeds that people mention all the time couldn't be further from the truth I, I don't have any plans to use a lot of those breeds so there's always uh, so I guess to answer your question at the moment the plan is three mm -hmm. three different ones yeah and I don't think we're gonna go any further than that I, I think it would probably be wise to stay there so that things don't get too muddy that's pretty genetically diverse yeah yeah uh, the other thing is it, um, what was I going to say? My mind went blank for a second. And we're genetically testing the dogs too. Mm -hmm. So, right? Yeah, well, we're, I mean, I just ran Embark on the mother here, but we're, we're going to be doing that with all the puppies too, because Embark's kind of cool. I'm learning some things. I'm, I, I don't, uh, I don't know everything about that stuff. So I'm figuring it out as we go, but they can pinpoint you know puppies that carry the size gene which is kind of a nice thing to know right mm -hmm. when we're when we're breeding some of these offspring because size is definitely going to be a problem um there's also things we're fighting with with color you know that um i'm not putting a bunch of color restrictions but i feel a dog of this type shouldn't have a lot of white on it you know it, it should be a it should be a dark blue or a black or a solid brindle or a fawn, you know, some, something that's intimidating looking. Once you start throwing a bunch of white on a dog, it softens the appearance real quick. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like, for instance, a St. Bernard is a lot softer looking than a, than a Pressa, right? Or a, or a Neapolitan or a Borable. Those are much more intimidating looking dogs, even though a St. Bernard is huge <laughs> and and could do a lot of damage if it wanted to it's just yeah, cool job, right? got more yeah. hair and it's, you got a lot of white on it and it's just cuter you mm -hmm. know so there's things that we're fighting with you know we're going to run into white because bull terriers have a lot of white you know mm -hmm. so so uh we're just playing around with different things but it's working Luck, luckily luckily a lot of the molossoid dogs erase white mm -hmm. It helps, yeah, definitely helps. Mm -hmm. Besides the head, was there another reason why you did use the bull terrier? Oh, sure. Well, there's some vitality there. That's kind of a plus. Mm -hmm. You know, 
they're pretty hardy little dogs. They have their own problems. For, you know, I'm fully aware. Every breed does. They got, they got, you know, they have health problems that you can run into. Mm-hmm. They're extremely vibrant. But they're they're vibrant. They're really powerful for their size. You know, they have a lot of go to them. They have, like, what's the terminology I'd like to use? They're, you know, a bull terrier you just jump five feet in the air, I swear, mm-hmm. just out of nowhere if they want to. You know what I mean? They're just, they're just, bing, they're just, they're just in the air, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so there, there's definitely that that helps, you know, and, and there's, there's a lot of variance in bull terriers, right? From type, some are a lot bullier, a lot heavier bone, have a lot more head type than others. And obviously I'm only using certain types. I'm not going to use a, a terrier that's a bull terrier that's overly terrier. That's, that's not the kind of specimen that I'm going to use. Right. Mm-hmm. But, uh. You know, and, and as a breed, I think bull terriers as a whole are built pretty well. You know, they, they have. If you go to a dog show and and there's twelve bull terriers out there, most of them are are built pretty damn good. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, it isn't always like that with some of the bigger dogs. You know, it's it's hard to to maintain the gargantuan appearance and have the structure at the same time. So it it helps it helps with that. Right. I'm already seeing, you know, in, in these pups, I, they're just babies. They are, but there's certain things you pick up on real quick. And I'm I'm already seeing that, you know, they they have a lot of turn to stifle. They're starting to walk a little bit. You, you can just kind of pick up on certain things, even when they're little. Um, you know, they're, they're too young for judgment. But because of what we've used, I have no doubt that, I'm just not worried at all about the way these dogs are going to be built. I'm very confident that they're going to be built very well. You know, the question is type. The, mm-hmm. the question is, uh, you know, what what's the head type going to be like? Are they going to be big enough? Are they going to have enough bone? You know, things like that. But as far as just overall canine structure, super good. Mm-hmm. Not even worried about it. I don't worry about that. Yeah, not, there's... That's always been my number one priority in in any breed that I've messed with as I look at structure first. That's just me. It just goes back to the beauty the beauty situation, you know. The, a dog that's built well is attractive to me. You know, I find that attract. I don't care how much bone and mass a dog has and how much wow factor it has. If it's built poorly, I'm turned off right away. You know, and, and there's a lot of intelligence. The, the, the breed's a very intelligent breed, right? You're right about that. Mm-hmm. And that's another asset. And, and it's kind of funny because, you know, so far in the project, that's something we do really want to call just very intelligent dogs. Um, and we're kind of seeing that. Well, the thing, the thing to say about stubborn, yeah. But, yeah, smarts go with stubbornness a lot. But uh, I wouldn't say necessarily obedience, but they're very smart. Intelligent. <laughs> They're, they're going to push the limits, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The I wouldn't say that. It's not going to be. It's not going to be somebody's first dog. No, I wouldn't recommend that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, it's you, you got to be a dog savvy person. Dogs. Yeah, you got to know how to deal with a canine that has a, a brain. So, I believe that in five to ten years, we're going to have dogs that represent that concept really, really well. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of them. <laughs> we're, we're not. We're, it ain't. I still would not consider it a breed in five to ten years. I, I'm very politically correct in the way I talk about this. Right. You know, I'm, I, uh, I don't know when that's going to happen. You know, I don't. I don't know when. Foundation stage for a while. Yeah, I don't. I don't know when I'm going to be able to stand back and call this a breed. I'm not even worried about that. Possibly. Right. Years, we could have a show, though. maybe one somewhere. I could see that, yeah. Five yeah, five years, I could see a dog show, like mm-hmm. a like a fun show type of thing or something. Because yep. uh, there might be just enough out there that kind of have the look to where you could do that. Mm-hmm. I could see that happening. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just going to be a select few, you know. I don't. A lot of it depends too on. You know, people are going to buy these puppies, and of course, I'm going to move forward. And I, like I already mentioned, we have some help in South America. 
Um, but the big question is, these people that are, are taking these puppies, are they really going to move forward, or are they just excited today? Mm-hmm. Because it is exciting, but it's work, man. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's work, and, and you're probably going to fail here and there, right? Mm-hmm. And so, you know, and, and, of, and of course... I'm, I'm, uh, if people want to be involved in this, I, I guess I should preface things with this. I don't, I don't like being a leader. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't like following people either. You know, I'm kind of more of a do my own thing kind of guy. Yeah. I, I really don't. I, I don't like telling people what to do. I've never been that way. I don't, I don't like that, but I have to, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, there, I don't really have a choice right now with the stage that this thing's at. At, at this stage, it's, it, each dog is very important and they need to be bred. It needs to be bred a certain way. Selectively and very carefully. Right. And uh, what's interesting about it is, you know, we'll watch this offspring grow and as they mature and, and become old enough for breeding, if, if they're still a candidate, assuming that they are, they're not all going to need to be bred the same way. And, and some dogs are going to need to be bred a certain way. And in doing that, you're going to fall behind on something, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like no matter, no matter what I did in this situation, Trade-offs. you're, you're trading things off, you know, like this dog has a great head, but it's too small. Mm-hmm. So you got to get some size. Well, in order to do that, you're going to lose some head, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so it's, uh, it's going to be a back and forth thing. I say this to be realistic, you know, the, the, anybody that says, Oh, I want one of these. I want to do this. Well, do you really, <laughs> right, right. you know, because I'm going to tell you what to breed it to and you're going to have to listen to me and it will be an adventure and you may not get the results you want right away. You know, it, it like, oh, I don't want it. I don't want it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, and I know that feeling because I've had to do it. I'm doing it right now. Mm-hmm. So it's very difficult, you know, for me, it's easy because I'm so inspired by it and Joe is too. And we're, and we're so excited about it and we're not worried about it. You know, it's because we're just enjoying the process. Mm -hmm. But if anybody wants in on this and is, is expecting like instant gratification, it's probably not what you want to do, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. And and you're, you're going to lose money. You know, you're not going to make a bunch of money. You're going to lose money. (laughs) maybe someday you know we're getting there right but Mm -hmm. don't expect to cash in because it don't work that way Mm -hmm. it's uh you know it's a we're used to breeds that never make money anyways chad (laughs) (laughs) it can be that way yeah (laughs) yeah but that's another thing you know the, the money thing uh, you got to make some so you can keep going, you know, right, right. but uh, you know, b- people that know me, this is never an issue, but, but people that don't know me, there's a, there's people just have their perspective, you know, they see that concept and then, and they might come to, oh, Chad must be this guy that's just trying to make a dollar. Well, I wish I could, cause I'm not, <laughs> I'm working my ass off, you know, I'm just a UPS guy. I work full time Mm -hmm. and it seems like any extra money I have, I just dump into this thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you know, every once in a while you make a little bit of a turnaround, you know, I'll sell some bully puppies or something, or maybe get a stud service or whatever. And you, you find a way to survive, but, but it, it hasn't been, uh, I'm maybe if I was a better businessman or something, I don't know, but I'm, I'm, I'm more about the passion, you know, the art of it, like we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. In order to accomplish the dog, we have to keep the heart part of it first Mm -hmm. and full. The idea that very specific breedings so that we can get it right or as best as right as we can. But, Chad, you should say so far, at least with this letter, we're surprised from what we expect to see is kind of what we are seeing. So we know we're doing some things pretty, pretty right. right. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't get mon- like crazy surprises The the predictions have been pretty accurate. Mm-hmm. They really have. Yeah. Yeah. So that makes us feel good because, 
you know, whenever, like when we were doing this, I was like, is this not going to work? Is this, is this going to be like one of those things where it's just a goddamn waste of time? You know, other, uh, some other people didn't think it would ever work Mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. I should mention this too. Uh, there have been other people, you know, since I've came out with this concept that have attempted some things and, and uh, they've done some things that I would never do, and that's okay. You know, people are free to do that. But I was not impressed with the results. You it's, know, it's just when we read what you want, we, we're not going to call him a loss of press mail. Exactly, mm-hmm. exactly right. And I would also say, you know, there there's been uh, there's been some videos that have come out over the years of. Um, Different. They have nothing to do with me. They're connected to me. Like they, they're always. There's a video of a dog that uh, I think it originated in China. It came. It came out about six months after I came out with the concept, and it kind of has. What do we got going on outside? Yeah. Joe's going to take care of some dogs outside. Okay. Um, there's some aggressive barking going on. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, hold on a second. A little bit of chaos here. You go in your camp. Get on in there. Um, there was a video that came out that there's a dog in it. The video lasts five seconds, Tom. Mm-hmm. And, and they, it's, a, it's a brindle dog with a big spiky collar. It's a brindle dog with a big spike collar, and yeah. it kind of kind of looks like the concept. I have nothing to do with that. That that it, that has nothing to do with me. Um, People have all these ideas, if it's real or not. All I have to say about it is we've never seen it again. That came out years ago, and I don't see any more videos. I don't see any. So very suspicious of that. I don't. It has nothing to do with me besides the fact that it was connected to my concept. But I didn't make the video. I didn't do it. And, and uh, yeah, that's all. I, I have my thoughts on what it is, mm-hmm. but... It doesn't matter because it's not me. <laughs> it has right. nothing to do with me at all. So, you know, people have said, oh, it's real. It's there it is. Look at it. And it's not, you know, mm-hmm. it's not real. This is not a real thing. This is a project. So mm-hmm. don't be don't be uh, fooled by. If you don't see me posting it, then it, then be suspicious. That's what I would say about that. Right. You know, right. and I'm pretty good about getting back to people i get a lot of messages but i'll usually get back to people um you know sometimes if someone says i want to press a mail how much i might ignore that kind of a conversation just because that it's just such a common like that i I might just move on but if someone has a real question i'll i'll probably respond you know Mm -hmm. i do my best to do it you talk about the american bullies um are you gonna keep going with those as well uh, that's a good question. So <laughs> to be honest, where I'm at now is, uh, I obviously I'm going to keep something out of, I got 12 puppies sitting over here for this project. So I'll be keeping a couple of them mm-hmm. and I don't have a bunch of property. I don't have a big, huge kennel setup or anything. So I, I definitely, I'll be moving some dogs here one way or another and it might be pretty soon where I don't have any bullies anymore. I'll always have my hands in the pot. I co-own some dogs right now. You know, I can, I I'll still facilitate some breedings and take a pup here and there. And because I love the breed and I, I, I feel like I've done a pretty good job with it. You know, um, improvements to be made always for sure. But, uh, you know, I'm I'm uh, one of my dogs at a dog show. It's it's going to hold a good top line. You know, it's going to have a good rear end. It's going to have it's going to be built well, and it's it's still a bully dog. You know, there's bullier dogs out there for sure, but I'm a I'm all about balance. So I would rather get to the end game slower and and just instead of trying to hit on one dog and one litter. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm I'm more about getting consistent results and building off that and improving over the generations. But I, as far as me moving forward with the bullies, I'll have my hands in the pot, but I might not even have a bully here 
for much longer. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could see in the next six months that I don't even have a bully that's living here mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. just simply because of room, you know. Right. The bully community is, for the most part, really supportive. Right. Uh, but here's the interesting thing about that, and I and I'm not saying this to to smash the enthusiasm, but I think a lot of people in the bully community don't understand what we're trying to do here. I I think they see like a like a big thick pocket bull terrier looking thing, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And, and their, their heads in a, the bully community, the mindset is in a certain place, right? XL standard and X, XLs and standards and micros and, and pockets and all, right? And all this stuff. And I, I do, I have no desire to push this thing in that direction at all. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the big reasons I want this dog to be big is for one thing, uh, a large dog is an impressive thing, right? You, like you have to look at it right away just because of the size. But the other thing is just simply because of how big I'm trying to make them, it, it can never be like the American bully. It, it, it's impossible for it to ever get that popular because people can't have a dog that big. It's, it's just, you know, you don't see big dogs like that walking down the street every day because mm -hmm. most people can't handle a dog of that size. And I think that's good. You know, I, I don't want it to turn into uh, something like the American Bully because it's too popular and it's too common and it's it's not a, enough of a niche. You know, I would like I would like the Melasa Presa Mayo, if my dreams came true, to be something that you just didn't see very often at all. You know, you, you would you would have to go to a dog show and you might see two of them if you're lucky. That's that's kind of how i would say you want to see 10 12 30 of them well you're gonna to have to go to the national specialty you know yeah we want a viable that's, population that's about it that's it yeah not not looking for no we're not looking for guys selling them for 500 bucks at the back of your truck exactly yeah mm -hmm. so you know i have a lot of bully people that offer um and, and it's good too that i'm not I'm not dissing on this or anything, but, but offer, uh, stud service to help. You know, they just got a big old monster, right? A big old heavy bone bully with lots of muscle and all this stuff. And you never know something like that might be incorporated someday. But when I look at a dog like that, as impressive as it is, you know, is it going to help with the size factor? No, it is not. You know, is it, is it going to help with head type? No, in fact, it's extremely counterproductive. Mm -hmm. And and is it going to help with structure? Probably not. It's an American bully, mm -hmm. right? So there's a lot of no's there. And, and you're doubling terrier genes without that head. Exactly. Yeah, as as thick and as bully as that bully might be, there's terrier genes in that dog, mm -hmm. and you want to introduce some more terrier genes to it. And, and it's not the head top that matches the terrier it, genes either. Exactly. Can you hear Joe clearly yeah, in the yeah, background? Yeah, definitely. Okay. So I shy away from stuff like that. And I think, I think a, a lot of, and I, I really appreciate the support, you know, but uh, dogs of that nature, there's just no reason to do that right now. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe someday, who knows what, this is all trial and error. So everything I just said in this whole podcast, there might be some hypocrisy down the road because I might change my mind. <laughs> right, <laughs> because what I, way I'm, we're thinking might not work, but so far it's going in the right direction, and I and I think we'll probably stick to the plan. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I I really like a lot of uh, American bullies, uh, especially your your classic and your standards. Sure. Um, and I you know I do like some of the pockets, but you know I'm a bulldog guy, so I've always geared more towards a well-built English Bulldog, if it's going to be that size. Um, part of my problem with me never uh, getting a bully was because they, they, you know, they've become way too popular and, and just some of the negatives that come, you know, you just don't know what you're getting a lot of times. What is exactly an American bully? What, what, breeds uh came about the american bully 
<laughs> I didn't make them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we can, we can all guess. Yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, there's three or four grades I can tell you it's in there. Dave, Dave Wilson knows the answers. Just talk to him. You know, <laughs> who knows? He, three, three or four at least. He might lie. He might not. That's his prerogative. But it, but we're here now. You know. And it, here's the thing. Here's the thing about the American bully. They're cool. I have them for a reason. Mm-hmm. You know, and a good one. A good American bully, which is hard to come by, but a good one is a really impressive animal. I mean, I mean it is really, really cool. The, what other breed out there has that kind of muscle density, you know, with that kind of bulk and yeah, and bone and spread but proportionately, you know? I mean, can you imagine uh, if you took, say, uh, uh, let's, let's just take, who is it? I'm not going to mention any names, but but think of some, think of some of our national winners the last few years, mm-hmm. um, like them or not, doesn't matter. But uh, good examples of the breed for the most part. And if you were to take those dogs and make them as tall as a typical mastiff type breed at twenty, let's say twenty seven inches at the shoulder, that would be a well over two hundred pound dog proportionately Mm -hmm. right like like it would be huge and that that's what's so cool about an american bully to me is proportionately they really are monsters Mm -hmm. when they're when they're done the right way you know and uh so there's there's things about them that i could i could see being splashed in this whole thing at some point I've, i've just got certain focuses to to really hone in on before i think about doing something like that you know I, I I need size, I need bone, and I need head type, and I need structure. And the bullies just don't have all those things for for the current situation, you know. Mm-hmm. But I, I love the breed, and and they're they're a little messy, and they're a little mixed up. And there's a lot of type variation, you know. You go to a show, they don't all look the same. Mm-hmm. They don't. But uh, when you go to like when you get a nice champion class in there. Mm-hmm. Or, or if you got a good grand champion class, they start to look a lot more like, you know, when the when the dogs that are really winning a lot, they you start to see more consistency. So, you know, I mean, people have a lot of negative views about the breed, but I think in a lot of ways, I mean, there's better dogs now than there there was six seven years ago. I think. I mean, there's there's dogs out there that are maintaining a lot of bone and mass, and they're put together fairly well. There's not a lot of them. But they're they're getting there, just getting closer and closer, you know. And how's how's the, uh, the health of the bullies that you've uh, personally owned or co-owned? Really good. Yeah. I, I haven't had any problems yet, mm-hmm. but I'm pretty new in the breed, to be honest. I mean, I I didn't really. I mean, the oldest dogs that I've ever been involved with are only like seven years old now okay, okay, okay. but they're all they're all alive they're doing well Every, everything's i haven't run into any weird health problems or anything so for me it's been good but you know you hear a lot of horror stories with other things that are going on what what is an american bully that goes back to your question just read the standard you know the yeah. standard's pretty good i think they i think they've written the standard fairly well read it for mm-hmm. God's sakes, read it mm-hmm. and breed breed towards that. And a lot of people don't, you know, <laughs> they they really don't. The, the dogs they're breeding do not fit that description right. at all. And and I get it; some of that's subjective, and it's a matter of opinion, and that's the beauty of it. But mm-hmm. but uh, you know, there are pictures that they've posted on the official website. There's diagrams floating around out there that are pretty good. Just follow that standard, and 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 the dogs will get better real fast. Yo, I definitely, I definitely like a lot of the the well built ones, and yeah, me being a bulldog guy, you know, I I see some similar traits that I really like, and, and sure, I'm also American pit bull guy, I, you know, just being around those dogs as well. Well, well here's the thing, you know. You know if you go to a dog show for for the bullies, like an ABKC show, mm. uh, I hate to say it, but let's say there's eighty dogs there, mm-hmm. you might see two. I'm, and I'm serious right now. You yeah. might see two that actually have an acceptable rear end. Only two. Yeah. 
And and that doesn't mean the rest of them are any good, okay? It might have a good rear, but a terrible head or whatever, right? But you'll you'll only find two with a really with a good rear end, and that's a common occurrence, and that's sad. But the reason I bring this up is because the standard is really specific on what the rear end is supposed to be, and it's not supposed to be a bad one. In fact, the, the American Bully should probably have the most impressive rear end of every dog breed out there, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. You know, big thigh muscles, turn to stifle. The, the way the standard reads is that the, the rear should be just as thick as the front. And it mentions that the front should be pretty darn thick, right? We're, we're supposed to have a nice wide chest. And so for the rear to match that, you got to throw pumpkins in those thighs, right? And uh, that's really cool when it's done right. Mm-hmm. It's a really cool thing, but no one follows it. Mm-hmm. You know, no one no one follows the standard. Very few people do. And so, and it, and it wouldn't even be that hard, Sean. You know, like, <laughs> like if, if if people just started putting the right dogs together and trying to make the right improvements over, you know, and just take a little bit of time, mm-hmm. you know, in two three generations, the breed could be in like a whole different place really easy but nobody wants to listen you know there's always a select few and i guess that's the beauty of it too is the people that are really good at it you know they kind of rise above the rest and that's great for them right yeah yeah (laughs) it's great for them but at one point chad has taught me a lot about american movies at one point, it seemed like there was a lot of genetic bottlenecks around the tax dog that caused a lot of issues. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, but that line did some good things, too. I mean, it, yeah. it, it helped with a lot of there, – there's a look there that's really cool because of all that. But uh, they, they, uh, maybe a lot of it's miseducation or people just breed what they can sell, maybe. Maybe that's the problem. I don't know. But, but – uh, I think uh, something that really ruins breeds is customers as well. You know, it's it's a uh, it's a breeder's responsibility to do it the right way, regardless of what customers want, mm-hmm. and that's a hard thing to balance because you want to sell them, right? And if customers just buy heads, because they do, right? Customers like they don't they don't know what they're looking at; they're just ignorant. So they you give them a cute little head and the color they want, and they're happy. And, and you can, you know, make some money. But uh, if you actually breed to the standard and are a little more critical of what you're doing and you say to yourself, I'm not just going to curtail to what the customer wants. I'm going to do this the right way because what the customer wants is pretty ignorant. They don't know what's good and what's bad. They have no idea. And you really have to think that way. Um, and I, I think a lot of people don't. They just do whatever they can get away with selling, and that equates to poor quality because customers don't know what quality is in a dog. They don't. They, they don't know this stuff. Mm-hmm. They just want a dog. You know, they they want a pet. They they want a nice little dog that they can take home and love, and that's great. But <laughs> they want a dog to walk down the street. Cool dog, dude. That's it. Yeah. And yeah. so it's real easy to get lazy in your breeding practices. You know, because you know you can move the puppies without working too hard, I guess. You know, so I, I, you know, it's the breeder's fault, but I, it's this, it's this problem between selling something and doing it the right way. And that's a hard balance to, to figure out in your head. I get it. But, you know, I've always, uh, how can I say this? The last thing I'm worried about, it sounds weird, I know, but but the last thing I'm worried about is what the customer wants. It really is. Mm -hmm. Because they don't know, you know, like your little kid, because that's what a customer is, they're they're a little kid because they don't know nothing, Mm -hmm. you know. And are you just going to give your little kid everything it wants? Absolutely not. Every once in a while, you're going to eat Brussels sprouts and broccoli. Right, you're going to have... Right. You're going to have to eat your vegetables and take your vitamins, right? And so 
that's kind of how I view the dog thing. Because these customers, they're kids. They don't know nothing, you know, figuratively speaking, yeah. right? Most, they don't know anything. And so you have to do it for them. And that's a big responsibility. And I'm still learning, you know. I'm, I'm learning a lot now about more health te- i haven't done a lot of health testing you know i'm starting to get more into that i'm i'm uh i'm determined to do a better job of that i've been lucky and i haven't run into any crazy problems but that's just blind luck you know it's not because i'm you know i don't know what's going on with that dna <laughs> you know what i mean I, I can't see it i don't i don't i'm not some crazy geneticist you know i'm just i'm just uh picking good looking specimens that move well and that fit what I'm trying to do. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so, uh, I'm, I'm learning as we go here too. And I'm excited about it. I'm excited about figuring more out about that stuff because it's, you know, that kind of stuff just makes for a better story down the road. 